In this video, I'm going to be talking about the table template in a little bit more depth um, and sort of explaining some of the features of the table template. Um, this is kind of a newish Flourish template um, and it's sort of a simple concept, but it's quite powerful um, when you know how to make the best of it. Um, so I'm going to be explaining how to make the best of it. Um, so I actually want to start not here in the table with the settings, but actually in the data tab just to <laughs> show it to you and explain the data structure. Um, and the data structure is probably the simplest of any Flourish template that we have. Um, you basically just enter your data in the data table as you would like it to appear um, in, the, in the actual table. Um, there's a little bit of, a little bit more intricacy going on here um, when you want to make charts, but I'll talk about that in a second. So basically the only thing you have to make sure is that the data is in the right order, whatever order you want, and that all of the columns that you want to show up are selected. Um, there's only one column setting, so it's pretty simple. Um, so back here in the preview tab, you can see that the data is, you know, kind of just displayed um, in the same way. And um, there are a couple of different features that I really want to point out um, that sort of make tables quite powerful and, and useful. Um, so the first one is um, that these can be sortable, these columns can be sortable. So make sure you have this column sorting setting on. Um, and once you do that, you can click through and uh, sort of sort the columns A to Z, Z to A, or unsorted um, back to the beginning. This is really useful um, if you're sort of creating some sort of interactive database that you want people to be able to sort through and, and discover and um, analyze themselves. Um, another thing I wanted to point out was that you can sort of control the pagination with this rows per page um, setting. So right now it's at 51 because this is a table of the 50 estates plus uh, the District of Columbia. Uh, Columbia. Um, but if I wanted this to be sort of a shorter table with more pages, I could just do like five per page or eight per page or something like that. And um, now you have this pagination that helps you click through the uh, different pages. So that's something that you may want to play around with. Um, Actually, I'm going to turn it back to like 15 for now. Um, so the next thing I wanted to point out was this um, stripes option. So some, a lot of tables will have um, each row sort of colored slightly differently to sort of make a clear differentiation between the rows. Um, it's, a, it's a very column, so common sort of uh, table design feature. And so in this case, you'll just click over here to make it a really light gray. Um, oh, okay. Try again, one, two, three, one, two, three. There we go. Um, so now you can see that this is sort of every other row is colored slightly differently. Um, you can also do this by column if you want, um, which I don't know, may be useful. Um, there's also obviously a bunch of different cell styles for like alignment, um, and padding, and you can add borders um, if you want. Change the color. Um, you can add borders on the entire thing. You can change the column widths. Um, you can get into some really sort of custom column widthing um, here with this custom um, option. Auto is usually pretty good though. Um, you can also style the headers. So that's all really useful. Um, then the next thing that I want to talk about is this charts option. And this is sort of the option that makes, sorry, I'm going to get rid of that, that makes um, Flourish tables kind of different from other visualization tools and table tools, um, which is that you can add these bar and, and line charts to them. So here you'll see that we have, um, first you need to make sure that you have them enabled. So if I disable this, it just goes away. But actually this is useful because it shows what the um, bar chart is actually doing. So what you do is you enter the name of the columns that you want to make the bar chart out of. So if you go back to our data sheet, you can see Clinton and Trump vote shares, I believe, um, per state, by state. Um, and um, then the once you enter them in here, you also can give it a new column name and it makes a bar chart out of those two values. So if I disable this, you can see that we go to Clinton and Trump back as, as their own columns. If I enable it, you see this bar chart, um, which is really quite nifty, <laughs> I think. Um, the same sort of goes for this line chart. So you can only make one of each at the moment. Um, but 
you do the same with the line chart. So if I disable it, you'll see that this line chart is being made out of all of these columns. It's kind of drawing a line one to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. If I enable it, you can see that um, that's what it's doing and we're creating this new population column. Um, and you can also sort of choose a color palette. Well, I guess this isn't gonna do anything because they're there, but I can choose a color palette. I can choose the, change the color of this if I want. Ooh, that's bright. Um, and it's really quite a, quite a nifty feature. Um, and it can make really sort of useful data visualization um, out of tables. Um, the last sort of main thing I wanna show you is this number formatting um, column, so uh, setting. So if you want to sort of reformat, say I had, um, let's go back and turn this chart off. So say I had all of these columns here, 1960, 1970, 1980, and I wanted them to, instead of having um, this number here, which is like, I guess, 3.2 million, I actually wanted it to have commas in there. Um, I need to put the names of the columns right there. And then it will format those columns um, according to these, this, in this um, format. So you can see that it has a comma in there. And if there were decimals, it would have decimals. I wanted to make it sort of a European style with the, the um, decimal points instead of the commas. You can do that. Uh, and then if I add 1980, move that to the next column as well. Um, so this is something that confuses people, but is um, definitely important to know if you have data in a sort of without commas or something, you want to add commas, that's how you do it. Um, and then actually the last thing I want to show you is this mobile view option. So tables are not always something that sort of looks great on small screens because they're sort of inherently wide um, wide in format. So we have this option here to control what, um, what the table looks like on mobile. So the default option is blocks, which means that each row, instead of being like a row in a table, is made into this like sort of block. Um, but you can change it back to table with a scroll bar um, if you want to. And that's, this is, really useful, especially if you're sort of a news organization or someone that knows that a lot of people are going to be looking at this table on mobile. Um, you definitely want to play around with this. So that was kind of a long one, <laughs> um, but I just wanted to make sure that um, I explained all of the really important features of the table um, because it really is a great um, template and it really is something that um, I don't think people use enough. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully that was helpful.